Halo Infinite's cosmetics are a hot mess. What's going on everyone? My name is SD Dog, and today we'll be discussing 343's marketing mishaps from last year and how that actually may affect people's experience with in-game cosmetics during Infinite's launch period. But just to be crystal clear, this is not a video about specifically the armor coding controversy that happened a few months ago that kind of riled up the Halo community, you know, paying for colors and whatnot, even though we will touch on that a bit. Instead, today we're looking at the promotions that happened in the last few months that are food or toy brand related that have in-game DLC attached to them. But before I fully explain and go into it and kind of let you know what I'm getting at here, let's just set the scene a bit, shall we? So back in July of 2020, we were mostly all very skeptical about what 343 had shown for an Infinite's gameplay debut, right? Which in turn led to the delay. So unfortunately, the marketing promotions uh, that were planned months ahead of the original release date uh, were unfortunately already in motion and there was nothing really for 343 to do. And we know this because they even came out and said in one instance, partnerships like this don't happen overnight. And this one has been in the works for a long time. And this quote is specifically related to the Monster Energy promotion that was rolled out in spite of the delay. More on that in a minute. But what I'm mainly getting at here is that I think it's fair to assume that this was the case for many other promotions that have come out since then, such as the Funko Pops, Mega Constructs, Wicked Cool Toys, Nerf Guns, Mondelez, you know, Oreo Nutter Butter Chips Ahoy, GameStop, Butterfinger, and even Kellogg's. In any event, my gripe is not, and I repeat not, with the fact that Infinite's promotions are incongruent with the fall 2021 release window. That is completely understandable and forgivable. I think people should not give 343 flack for that because that aspect is pretty much out of their control. Now instead, my criticisms will lie with what 343 did have control over in this situation. But now, let's dive into specifics. So the Monster Energy promotion happened in the United States, Canada, Europe, and I believe some other parts of the world. All of which promised an elusive adrenal weapon coating for the MA-40, BR-75, the new commando rifle, and the new MK uh, sidekick pistol, and we also got some player emblems that are exclusive to this promotion. However, the main problem that I ran into is that I couldn't attain all the promotional items during the promotional period. <laughs> Especially in the United States. Uh, let me just clarify. I am in the United States. This was just a monstrous Easter egg hunt within itself. You'd think that these weapon coatings and emblems would simply be granted by buying cans of, you know, these sugary poisonous drinks, right? <laughs> no. So the other countries had it way easier for whatever reason. You just buy an energy drink and you get the code, or you get like all the codes, right? Not that easy in the United States. Instead, what they did was scatter all of these items to the wind and intentionally pretty much made them unattainable to everyone in the United States. So let's just run through it real quick. So basically the first skin was the BR-75 and that was available if you entered codes from September through November on Monsters website and you got that code through an augmented reality type of experience through Snapchat. So basically you would scan the code from the monster can and it would open up this little experience thing on Snapchat and you'd find the code through like this little mini game. You know, it was cool, it was gimmicky, but essentially, yeah, you, you had to do that every month and then you enter a code and then by the end of like November, you, you finally got the BR skin. You do all that work and you get one skin. Okay, well, moving on. We get to the VK78 Commando skin and that one was pretty straightforward. If we're being fair, this one was the most cut and dry. So you just go to the store, you buy a can of Monster, save the receipt, and then you take a picture of the receipt, send it to a number, and then you get the code through your phone the next day for that skin, right? Not a big deal. But now we get to the MK40 sidekick, which was exclusively only attainable at Miger stores. So I had to Google what a Miger store was. <laughs> Given I'm, I'm on the West Coast, so I had no idea. But essentially, it's a grocery chain only found in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Illinois, and Wisconsin. <laughs> So this promotion was essentially landlocked for whatever reason. Whoever thought that was a great idea, you get a raise. Uh, luckily, an awesome dude on the Halo forums by the name of Brutal Vengeance hooked me up with such code, being that he was able to go to one of those stores. Um, huge shout out to him. Anyways, back to it. I almost forgot to mention that this particular exclusive promo only lasted like a month. <laughs> so even if you lived in that area and then you found out about it later, it's, it's just too late. It was such a weirdly exclusive promo for that one. And then finally we have the MA-40 assault rifle skin. And unfortunately it's still unknown how to get it in the United States. Which is really unfortunate because to put a cherry on top of all this, the promotion period is now completely over. But yeah, mainly I'm just overall baffled that 
they thought that this was a good idea to basically piecemeal all of these cosmetics and scatter them to the you know the four ends of the earth <laughs> but yeah where do we go from here though so 343 could down the line right they could say well we're sorry that we didn't you know make a clear way to get all these cosmetics so here they are for free or here it is to purchase in the store when infinite's out i feel like that's kind of a double-edged sword at this point because as I was saying, this was a very big Easter egg hunt within the community, at least from what I saw on the forums. A lot of people were bartering for codes from other countries. A lot of people were just exchanging information. It was a big Easter egg hunt. Like I personally went out to different stores and, and kind of you know collected as much as I could. I feel like if they were to give out these cosmetics you know, day one or later on, it would definitely piss off that hardcore community who did a lot to get these codes. And then on the other hand, you have a bunch of people who missed out on the promotion because, you know, the promotion was just inherently flawed. And then on top of that, you're going to have a bunch of people who get in day one who may have just not known about the promotion at all. And they're going to be like, hey, why does that guy have a green and black skin? It's pretty cool. How do I get that? Why don't I have that? In my opinion, I think it's going to bring up a lot of questions around day one that I hope 343 is ready to answer for, you know. Um, and, and I see both sides of the, of the argument here. I see uh, an argument for giving these codes away. I see an argument for not giving them away because there are a group of people who scavenge for them. And I think they deserve that exclusivity. And then there are a group of people that I can sympathize with as well. You know, people who may not have known about this promotion or may not have been able to get all the cosmetics because it was poorly handled. But speaking of other poorly handled promotions, let's now talk about GameStop. So yeah, I'm actually surprised this one kind of flew under the radar. So back in late October of 2020, there was a blog post that announced the Redshift armor coating that was exclusive to GameStop. Uh, this is the armor coating that essentially sparked the whole armor coating controversy. But putting that aside for now, What's important here is that this promotion was going on from November 9th to December 13th, so really only a few weeks here. But the main problem was everyone at GameStop didn't know what was going on. <laughs> like, no one knew that this promotion was happening. The promotion essentially was if you walked into a GameStop during this period and you bought Halo-related merch in-store, you would be awarded with the color red. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, the red shift armor coating. So easy enough, right? Well. I go into my local GameStop and ask an employee about the promotion. He looks at me like I just defecated in the store in front of him. So then I go to the manager of said store and I ask him about the promotion, assuming that he would know about it since he's the manager, right? But no, everyone's confused as to what I'm talking about, even after I show them stuff about it online. So I leave the store, you know, confused as ever, but you know what? I am motivated to get this meaningless digital item. <laughs> I call other GameStops in my area, Ask them, you know, about the promotion, get the same response. No one knows what I'm talking about. So then I go to the forums and I scour Halo Waypoint. I find out that other people are having the same exact issues and don't know what to do to grant that grants this coding. You know, people are literally just blindly buying merchandise and not getting these codes on the receipts. Some are and they don't know why. So I eventually find out that in order to get the coding, there are only a select amount of items in the store that will grant you the code on your receipt when you buy it. These are things like Funko Pops and action figures, and by the way, they're all mainly sold out in these GameStops, you know? I check the SKUs for basically every store in my area and there's nothing available. There, there's nothing. So how am I supposed to get this coding when one, there's none of the employees know about it, and two, all of the items that work to get you this coding are nearly all but sold out. And this is kind of the reason why I'm making the video. It kind of slipped under the radar and I'm surprised not more people in the community are talking about it. But yeah, it's just kind of ironic that this mishap happened to the armor coating that sparked the controversy about armor coatings. Like the remaining few people that are willing to try out and possibly accept this new armor coating system are greeted with a slap in the face. But yeah, this again begs the question, should 343 put this coating in the game down the line to make it more accessible to people? Should this be exclusive to the people who actually, you know, did the research? worked together, did the scavenging and got the code. In other words, did most of the work that 343 was supposed to do anyways to make it easier. Either way, you're going to piss off one party or the other, like no matter what you do. And I guess this is kind of where my constructive criticisms come into play here. And uh, I have some suggestions for 343 because I think there is a way out of this that um, will not make them look like the bad guy at the end of the day. And uh, it won't be perfect obviously, but this is kind of, a, I guess, a, a, a meet me in the middle type of scenario. I think the most reasonable thing they could do is 
at least in the first few months from launch, make these cosmetics that we just talked about exclusive to the people who put in the effort to get them, right? Let these coatings be exclusive to them for a good period of time. And then at an appropriate time down the road, I think 343 should probably allow people to get these cosmetics. I don't think it should be put in a way that's free. Just straight up, here it is. Sorry about that. Because again, that's going to piss off that first group of people who got the cosmetics. And I also don't think it should be, here it is in the store, pony up $5, pony up $10, because I think that's also cheapening the effort. I think it should be in a way that's very much challenge-based. I think it should be something that's hard to get. If you get it, then you're like, hey, this person did something really hard or challenging either in multiplayer or campaign. It should definitely be something that people earn so that you're not cheapening the value of the cosmetic for the people who got it in the first place and then also for the people who get it later on. There should be some sort of uh, equilibrium there. But before I forget, there was one more thing I did want to mention. There was the Kellogg's promotion that happened as well. It was pretty brief. There was little to no marketing for this one either, and I'm actually surprised I discovered it in the first place. The only reason why I found out about it was because I stumbled across it on a post on the Halo subreddit. And uh, if you even just Google it, like Halo Infinite Kellogg's, there's not even really like a page that talks about it, what it provides. But basically, you what you were getting was the Azure vehicle coding that was mentioned in an earlier blog post last year. And also like two weeks of Game Pass. Like it was a really good deal. And then you can just go to the store, buy something as cheap as like a Pop-Tart for like two or three bucks. That's what I did. And you go home with all that and you get Pop-Tarts. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I saw nothing online about this really in terms of social media, uh, marketing for it on, in the actual store. I didn't see like Halo Infinite on these boxes of Kellogg's products. It was just really weird and I felt like that was a missed opportunity as well. And you already know the vehicle coatings are most likely going to be the most expensive thing in the store when we get into multiplayer. So that would have been nice to know for a lot of people like, hey, if you just go out to a store, you spend like two or three bucks on an item, you get a vehicle coating that's otherwise probably going to be worth uh, like triple that, if not more. And you get Pop-Tarts. But yeah, that's about it, guys. That wraps up the video. Uh, that's probably all my thoughts on it. But I'm really interested to see what you think about it. Were you able to secure these cosmetics in time? Were you not? Did you even know that these promotions were going on? What do you think 343 should do going forward if there is a problem at launch? I would love to hear all your comments down below. And if you like the video, um, definitely hit that like button. And if you want to see more Halo content, kind of like this, then subscribe. I appreciate your time, and I'll see you in the next video.